Hi, today I'm going to show you how to reset your maintenance cartridge for your Canon printer. So um, this method is also works for your toner cartridges that if they use this uh, same chip. Hang on a second, let's see if I can find the chip. So if they use all use the same chip. So a maintenance cartridge essentially is just a sponge in a plastic shell and it has this chip on it. So this chip is used to um, save the amount of you know um, times that the printer has you know uh, shot a a load of ink into the sponge. That way, it will know when to tell you to replace it. Okay. So the only way to reset this is is you need to create a backup when you first get your maintenance cartridge. You know when it's like brand new or you know after you've only used it like a couple times, and you create a backup. And once you know the, the um, printer has you know used it up and you know filled filled you know the counter has exceeded the max the minimum required you know uh, usage, you can then go ahead and reflash the backup that you created earlier, and that will reset the counter. Um, I would also advise you you know you also you know you know open up the clamshell and you know replace you know either replace the sponge or uh, you know you can simply clean it out you know just soak it in water. And then you know, go ahead and let it dry out, and then you know, just reinstall it. You know, put the chip back in, and you're 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 back to you know, uh, brand new you know maintenance cartridge, right? Um, yeah, they also sell the chips. You can just purchase a, a chip from from AliExpress, or you can purchase this device here, to you know, essentially wipe the flash and you know restore like a backup. It probably has like a backup of one of the maintenance cartridge uh, images here on the on the device itself. But today we are going to be using the Flashcat USB from Embedding Computers. I um I did my research. You can do this using the Arduino. It's a little it's a little um, difficult. Uh, it's, it's not as is not as user friendly as with the Flashcat, right? I already have the Flashcat. It's uh it, it serves me well. I use it for JTAGging, um, SPI flashing. You know, I use it to back up routers. You know, uh, network switches. You can um. You know, uh, flash BIOSes on bricked, you know, motherboards. You, you can use it for a lot of things, but yeah. So we're going to be using the Flashcat USB Classic. You can also use the Pro and the Export. So either either one of these will work. So um, let's go to the manual here. So this is the Flashcat USB manual, and we're going to be doing I2C. That's the protocol that the chip uses. And um, yeah, let's read here. So the wiring uh, only uses four pins. So VCC, ground, SDA, and SCL. When connecting to the device, you need to connect the SDA and SEL lines to a uh, to a, a each a, each to a resistor. These are called pull-up resistors because they're connected to VCC. If they're connected to ground, they're pull-down resistors. But yeah, so these are pull-up resistors. And you're gonna need a 4.7K resistor. That's the one I have. Um, that's the one I'm using. So this is my setup right here. I'll I'll come back to this. Um, you can also use a 4K t in, in, in between 4K and 10K. So if you have a resistor that's you know in between 4 and 10K, it should be fine. And it also mentions A0, A1, A2 pins uh, can be left disconnected. You can ignore that. In circuit devices. In circuit means that the chip is is soldered onto the device. So if you have like the the, the chip is loose, and in circuit means that it's soldered onto like a PCB or something like this. So this is in circuit. So it's soldered on. So anyways. Back to the manual. Um, by the way, I found you can leave these unchecked anyways. Um, so in circuit devices may use the address pin, so you will need to check the boxes. Like I said, leave them unchecked. Um, it also tells you that Flashcat USB cannot recognize the um, chip automatically. So you have to tell it which chip it's connecting to or device here. So therefore, you have to um, you know go to mode, protocol settings, and select from the drop down the chip and the speed as well. So Let's get information about the chip. So on this page, you will find more info about the chip. Um, so it's uh, right here, microcontrollerslab. Oh no, st.com. That's going to take us to this page. And this is this is the the specifications for the chip. So it's the MC24C16. It is a 16 kilobit chip, which means you know eight bits equals you know one 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 byte. So if you if you divide 16 by 8, you will get 2, which is 2 kilobytes. So that's the amount of storage that the chip can hold. You know, that's all it needs. You know, so it only needs it. You know, the the printer will only you know log you know how how many times it uses. So it doesn't need much much space. Also, the speeds like you can use 14 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, 
again, you know, 16 kilobit equals two kilobytes. And we're gonna be using, again, the C16, which supports 2.5 and 5.5 volts. Uh, the flash cat, um, you can change it from 3.3 and 5 volts. Um, in this case, we're gonna be using the 3.3 voltage setting. So there's a switch on the flash cat that you can, um, that you can flip to choose the voltage. Okay, um, so about this, the flash cat. So you're gonna wanna download the software. You're gonna extract it. And you're gonna go to driver and you're gonna right click on it and choose install. If you're Windows 11, you're gonna show more options and install. That, that way, once you connect the flash cat, just auto, it's gonna automatically install the driver for the device. And this is the software right here. You're just gonna launch that, which is I have open right here. So let's go configure the software. Um, so you gotta go to mode protocol settings and I2C SWI, and we're gonna select the device from the list. It's a 16 kilobit, and that's that one right there. That's a 24, you know, 16 kilobyte or two bytes. And it sa says that, you know, uh, check these, but I said leave them unchecked because if you leave them, you know, check, if you check them, uh, the flash layout will, will just be all, all out of whack. So just leave them unchecked. And again, four, 400 kilohertz, as, as the specifications, you know, said, you can 400 or 100, so whatever speed you want. And uh, once that's done, it tells you the manual says, okay, it says you have to also, um, in the settings menu, you have to select I2C EE prompt. So here, we're gonna have to go to mode. We're gonna change from SPI nor flash, which is the default, to I2C EE prompt. And once we do that, boom. So I have mine wired and in, in in, in connected already, and this is the way I have it connected. So I have the VCC connected to this rail here. So whatever you connect, so breadboard works, whatever you connect here, this is all connected right here. And I have the ground connected to this rail here, the negative rail, and the VCC is on the positive rail. And then, you know, I have those broken out here again. And then I have the SDA, which is the yellow, connected to this row. The way it the rows work is whatever you connect here are all connected. So not this way, but this way. Anyway, and I have one end of the resistor connected to that same row and the other end to the VCC. And same thing with the S SCL. So VCC here, SCL over here, and I got the resistor, the 4.7K resistor in between. And the way I have the, 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 um, the um, pins you know, um, holding on is using a piece of string. You can see over here, he uses some scotch tape. Um, I'm using a piece of string. Okay, so that's a close up there of the of the connections. So as you can see, all of this row and all of this row are connected. And the way we have it, so we have VCC, SCL, SDA, and ground. Okay, wrong tab. Okay, so yeah, that is pretty much how you connect it. That is how you configure the program. And now, once you've you know have everything connected and detected, so I'm gonna go ahead and redetect just just to be safe. So I just went ma main detect, you know, or I can press F1 and that'll redetect the chip. And this is pretty much the, all the data that the chip has stored right there. And the way you save this data is we're gonna use one of these buttons here and we're gonna use the first one, which is read memory, which is gonna read it and save it to a file. And so now it's asked where we wanna start and where we wanna end, we're just gonna leave the default. So it's gonna start from zero and it's gonna go all the way to the end to 2048. And we're gonna say, okay. I'm gonna save in downloads. I've already created a backup like a couple minutes ago before I recorded, you know, just, just testing. And now once we have it saved, you can create another backup and compare it using like a file compare utility, or you can just use the built-in compare utility here. So compare memory content. It's gonna ask us, what do we wanna compare it to? So we're gonna go back to that file we just copied and we're gonna say open and okay. And it tells us it, it matches 100%. So now you can be confident that the, the file that you have matches, you know, 100%. So we know we have a good backup. And you want to do the compare because sometimes the chips and the the, um, the pins can become, you know, disconnected. And, um, you know, you, you might only get like half the data. But this way, you know for certain that, yeah, 100% of the data matches. So let me just show you what it, what, what, it sh what it looks like when it doesn't match. So I took a backup earlier this week. And I've used the printer since, so the printer has been logging, you know, changes or, or you know, the count to this file. So, so I'm gonna just compare it to one I have back backup earlier. 
let's see, only 60% matches. So you see there, it just tells us, oh, you have a bad, you know, backup or, you know, the file doesn't match. Anyway. So yeah, now that you have this backup, you can go ahead and use your maintenance cartridge until, you know, the printer tells you that you need to replace it. Then, you know, when, when it does it, you know, come back, you know, do, do, do the, you're going to do the reverse. And then you're going to reconnect the wires and then you're going to write the backup that you took earlier and that will essentially reset the counter. I, um, I also advise you um, clean out the, the cartridge. So you're going to, you know, this, you know, you're going to open it up, you know, rinse out the sponges, do that at least every, you know, two uses. I mean, uh, yeah, you, know, you can buy a new sponge, but essentially if you buy a sponge, it, it's just going to cost you like almost the same as, as purchasing a brand new maintenance cartridge. So yeah, you know, don't be a pig, you know, rinse out the cartridge, you know, uh, reflash the chip, you know, let it, let, let the sponge dry and reinsert it, you know, reinstall it into your printer. Um, yeah. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and simulate, you know, restoring a flash backup. So I'm going to do, do that. I'm just going to go ahead and erase the chip uh, just to show you, you know, so yeah. So now you see the chip is erased. There's nothing but, but dots or Fs, right? So the chip is blank. I'm going to restore the backup I did earlier this week because that one has less less usage, so less uh, a, a lower count. And uh, essentially, so you're going to do, you know, you're going to click on, um, you're going to cl click on write data to memory. You're going to browse to where you save the backup. And then you're just going to click on OK. So we're going to write it from zero to, to the end. So it takes like four seconds. One, two, three, four. Boom. It's done. Now we, we've restored the original backup that you created. I'm going to go ahead and compare it just to be triple sure. And it's going to tell me 100% match. I'm just out of curiosity. I'm just going to compare it to the one I did just, just a couple minutes ago. And it's going to say mismatch. There you go. So yeah, that's how you use the FlashCut USB to create a backup of your maintenance cartridge to then later restore so that you can keep using the cartridge and not throw it away and save, save money that way. And um, yeah, hopefully the environment. Um, if you guys want to see me do it using the Arduino, uh, you can sound off in the comments if you have any questions you know, also, you know, um, yeah. And um, hopefully you found this video, you know, informative um, and uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Anyways, yeah, I hope you learned something and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.